know this is the will of God. I know we said that. I know we said that in 1933, 46, 53, 63, 65. Amen. You can send me all those quotes. That's, that's fine. But I know what the day is. This is 2014. And uh, I am not uh, saying the way you ran those wrong. I'm just saying we've come further in many things. Uh, I will say, tell you that I was, uh, I was part of his family. I was a young man growing up in his family. My mother and father were uh, going to the Jeffersonville Brandon Tabernacle at the time that I was born. And we continued to go there until after Brother Brown was across the bell. So I, from a, from a newborn child, we dedicated to and I grew up in the assembly, and I was right at 12 years old when he died um, and passed over the veil. So you can't, you can't teach me a whole lot about uh, Brandon Tabernacle and, uh, and about Brother Brandon. I've seen him for myself. And he was a great, great, great man. I would never want to diminish take away um, that character of William Brown. In fact, I, I kind of um, I took that character on. Um, I, I've seen how he loves people. Um, I've seen how he, he works with people. I've seen sick people healed in his knees, blind eyes open. I've seen the dead raised myself. Sitting no further away from here to Brother Alirio. When Brother Wade fell dead in Standing in the Gap, July of 1963, and I watched Brother Brown. I was a young man sitting next to my mother, <laughs> and I watched Brother Brown come out there and wait for that man from the day. At that time, I didn't know who the man was, but there was a man who took his coat off and laid it under Brother Wade's head. And um, so that was Brother Don Allen. And so right. Some years later, I married Brother Don Allen's daughter. Amen. Brother in fact, So I watched watched my father in law yes. lay his coat under the head of Brother Wade while he was laying there dead. And I watched my pastor, William Brown, raise him. So I've seen just about everything that you can imagine. I've seen lawyers shrunk and disappear just like that in front of your eyes. I've seen cataracts that fell off of the eye and dropped into the floor. I've seen, uh, I have seen uh, almost everything that you can name. I've seen one day, I was um, sitting in the tabernacle with my mother and father, one on each side of me, and then my brother was next over. But um, Brother Brandon was in his office, and he, um, he came out of his side office, and when he came out, I seen the pillar of fire about three foot in front of him. And it was moving across. And of course, you know, being an eleven year old boy, it was kind of amazing. I mean, there was it was as big as as uh, circular, but as big as this Bible hanging there, moving. And almost in a, a shape like that. And so I I yelled to my, my mother. She's sitting next to me, and I said, Mama, see that? And of course, in the Brown Tabernacle, if you do something like that, the deacons are going to be there to take you out. <laughs> so my mother grabbed me, put her hand over her mouth, put her mouth up to my ear, and said, Shh, shh, shh. Well, Brother Brown, when he heard me say that, he wasn't any further than me. Here's Jess from Brother Jess Nonsense. And Brother Brandon heard that he was walking to the pulpit and he stopped. He looked right at me. And he looked up at that pillow of fire. Got three foot in front of him. He went to the pulpit, he got his thing, and he come back, stopped, and he looked at me again. He knew that I had seen that pillow of fire. He knew that. And I've seen it many times. I've seen it when it's moving among the people. I've seen it healing the sick. I've seen a man one day, he had his child there. His child was crippled. 
And that man had, uh, had told my uncle and my father and some of them that he didn't really believe that, that there was any kind of a, uh, a presence in the pillar of fire or whatever. And uh, they told him to come and see for himself. Amen. Well, so he was there. He was further in the back, and the little boy was crippled. And they told him, bring your little boy, and they be healed. When he set his little boy on the floor, and uh, the Holy Spirit began to move in the meeting, Brother Brandon stopped. He didn't know that was there. But the pillar of fire, the Lord Jesus revealed to him, and Brother Brandon stopped. He said, Sir, you've been a skeptic. He said, That little boy you got sitting on the floor down there, you couldn't see shoes, chairs everywhere, hundreds of people. He said, That little boy, he's your son. He said, Pick him up. He's healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 I've seen that little boy who I knew as a crippled boy all of his life. I've seen many things. Amen. I've seen one of those little girls with bone cancer just this past week. Amen. The Lord Jesus healed her. Amen. And the Father told me, he said, he's getting ready to leave. And he said, Brother Parnell, she gained almost eight pounds. He thought he'd use kilos. And figured out. He told me, he said, uh, he said, brother, I don't know what he, I, I can, he was like 2.2 2, thousand. Okay. So he told me, he said, she's gained, she was less than 60 pounds. And then he said, brother, he, he said, she's gained that much weight back. She's doing very well. So I'm trusting that she'll be fine. I had a brother to write me. He said, brother Parnell, he said, um, she, if she's healed, how do you know she's healed? So, was she, did she still look the same? I'm sure, she still looked the same. She couldn't hardly walk. She was skinny. She had no color. Right. She'd been in the bed for 14 months. Right. She had all kinds of trouble, but I said she did get up and walk. Amen. And I said, Brother, I said, did you see the picture of my from one side and heel? That she had the same thing, he and bone cancer. I said, you think when Brother Brown was great for her, the flesh just come back on her body? Yeah. And it took a month for them to get that picture of Florence Nightingale and she was healed in the back right. of itself. So, that's why I said, to, 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 yeah. to uh, give her her help and um, trust the Lord. So, I've seen many things living in, the, in that time frame. As a young boy transitioning over, I remember, I remember uh, Brother Brown preaching, preaching a message on uh, marriage and divorce. I actually, when we went to Jefferson Villa, I was, I was 11 year old, and uh, we went down for a series of meetings and was staying at my uncle's house in Jeffersonville. And um, a series of meetings was preached in February of '65. And if you go back and you take a look at that series, it was a man running from the presence of the Lord. Um, seems not there with a shock. This is the situation. God's only provided a place of worship um, and marriage and divorce. So I remember from all of the church, um, and it was the last message Brother Brown preached it was marriage and divorce. Yeah. And as a young boy, I went back to my uncle's house, and all the parents, you know, they were sitting around, and I had two or three uncles there, and, and parents, and everyone else, and they were all uh, sitting right there after the message had been spoken, and arguing over who could go to heaven, and who was in adultery, and who wasn't. <coughs> we just heard the message spoken that no one's in adultery anymore. That's what he said. Well, he said, come on. You're innocent. So I heard a message in my mind. I thought everybody's free. You know, I was just a little kid. I thought, wow, he did free everybody. And then here they are sitting in there arguing over who's free and who's not. It, it got to me, young boy. And I remember going out, stepping into the room where they were at, and I just screamed out. I said, why can't we just believe what he said? Boy got quiet. No one said anything. And it started like, oh, Hallelujah. What I have to say. So that was uh, that was a time when, when
when people are in such trenches. Do you believe we're not in a dark place today? Amen. 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 I know that I am not in a dark place. Amen. I know I was where the sea was open, where the bread of his came, before everything you say. Well, you wasn't even married then, Brother Barnett. Well, I was in adultery. But any any kind of a system that comes different than than uh, than the spoken word body is an adulterous system. And it just has to be changed. Well, it got changed. The universe was changed. The orbits in the heavens changed. Everything changed. But Brother Random knew it was such an important message on marriage and divorce that he he stepped out in, on August the 30th. Yeah. Of 1954, August 30th of 64, and he said, "Just this morning, I received the revelation and understanding on marriage and divorce." Now that was August the 64. Now he tells us, "I didn't understand marriage and divorce till just today, August 30th." He said, "I I received the revelation on this morning." Hey, and why would you want to go back there and pick out anything that he said before August 30th? And then try to hold that over people. Oh, you can't go to heaven. You can't do this. You can't be this. You can't be this in the church. You can't go. You, why hold that against anybody? Because in August the 30th of 64 is the first time he ever had the full revelation. Yeah. In in marriage. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And look how long it took him to preach it. Because he was still waving it out, thinking about it. That day, he said, I know what the scripture said. There was a question. Can people living in adultery go to heaven? Tell it. And Brother Branham said, I know what the scripture Tell says. It. He said, the scripture says that an adulterer cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Tell it. He said, a lot of very good friends of mine and people are in that condition. And he said, I know that. But he said, if there is a predestinated seed, God will make a way. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Just believe that if there's a predestinated seed, God will make a way. Amen. Yes. Yes. And he didn't preach it. He went through August, September, October, November, December. January, and he still had not walked and preached his message on marriage and divorce. Do you see how hard he was struggling to understand, even though he got a direct revelation and an understanding on it and it finally opened up to him? Yet still he was struggling with how to bring it to the people. There's many things that I have written down at home and I'm still struggling with how to bring it to the people. Amen. Because I know it's such a change. When we draw out God incarnate, flesh changed, and it's the flesh of Jesus Christ now. It's the flesh of the Holy Ghost now. I knew that that would, would knock so many traditions completely out of the water. And then many people would say, but it be. Today, you talk about the new birth being on the flesh, but that's where it happened. You talk about the new birth, what did Acts 2 say? It said, uh, it said uh, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit upon all rocks. Souls. This, oh, it doesn't say souls. It says flesh. Amen. Oh, okay. Well, I believe that. Amen. If there is a new birth, it's from God pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. Amen. His Spirit is on the inside of you. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yeah. And the fault of the kingdom of heaven is not food and drink, but it's righteousness and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So where did the kingdom of heaven pour out upon the flesh from? It is not. It's floating down. Like a fountain flowing out. Well, when the kingdom of God does that for you, then there's no way in the world that you can ever step outside the kingdom of God. You realize it's in you. Amen. You can't step outside of it. Oh, Brother Branham, it took him so long. And then he finally stepped in the pulpit. And he said, I was out in Arizona. And he said, the angel of the Lord came to the mountain. And he said, if he gets to move up and down, he says, he gave me... Yeah. The permission, so to speak, to go 
preach Paris the Wars. So he came back and he preaches it in February. A lot of people, they love to take that book and they love to still hold it over people's head and and uh, and use the law and the rule of that book. Well, I don't believe that was all Brother Random had on marriage and divorce. I believe that was the natural side of marriage and divorce. The fleshly side, where the people were mixed up in double and triple and quadruple marriages and everything else. And Brother Random said, don't worry about it. What did he do? He set their, he, he took the condemnation off of them and set their flesh free. Uh -huh. To say, don't worry about it. You're not, you're not an adulteress in the eyes of God. But then he came back. I believe there's a, there is a second and a third part of the marriage and divorce. He didn't call it that. He didn't say part two, marriage and divorce. He didn't say part three, marriage and divorce. But he preached it. When he came back and he took his message in Shreveport, Louisiana, November of 1965, the brother Adam stepped out and preached the invisible union of the bride. Amen. And he said, you have to divorce that old man in order to marry that new man. And then he come back and he said, you are justified, little bride. All of these things that the, that 